In today's video, I travel up to Dorset to meet Ezra, the man behind Ochre Instruments. You may have seen me testing out some prototype mics. Now the final versions have been made, so I'm heading up to his workshop to pick them up. He's also been kind enough to share some of his build process and how the microphones have evolved from the earlier copper versions. We'll be heading out later to test the new mics, but first off, let's get into a bit of the history of Ochre Instruments and how the Verdi mics came to be. The evolution was it started with these copper Verdi mics, which is why they're called the Verdi mics, because of like verdigris. Um, and obviously that's the de decoloration of copper. I guess because I'm touching it quite a lot, it hasn't patinaed. Like the, for example, this is copper and it's like gone completely green. Mm. People really like these and I really like them, but practically making them is quite difficult. So I began making them out of aluminium, which looks really nice, but also is like, it's just easier to make really. The, the thing about the copper was there was this annoying gap around the, the edge of the capsule, which kind of wasn't very good really, but there's a really nice tight fit with the, the newer Verdi mics. So those black yeah. Verdi ones were the second lot and they were XLR as well, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. XLR uh, plugs. So they're the, they're the best sellers. And then I began thinking about a 3.5 millimeter version that can fit into small recorders like this with plug-in power. And then these I built as cheap as possible mm -hmm. to be my drop rig mics because it doesn't have to be anything special because it's, you know, they could get, <laughs> get stolen destroyed or, or stolen, yeah. destroyed or whatever. And I made, I haven't actually got any here because I've stopped making them, but they made little versions like this. I kind of liked these small ones, but like you were saying, it's really when you've got fluff on them, this is a bigger radius fluff. I mean, you can see that it's hard already putting fluff on it and then having to put it on a stand or something mm. on the clip is just like really difficult. I then decided to make them longer, like the same size as the original Verdi mics. So these are the ones that I made just, just for rare fine sound design. <laughs> So these are basically the same design that, as the standard XLR Verdi mics, mm -hmm. but there's a colour difference and it doesn't have the preamp circuitry inside. Mm. But the reason I did it was because it's just nicer to have a longer mic. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. Because you can fit the fluff on and then like easily clip them in. Mm. Yeah, I have found they've been well handy that they are longer yeah. than some of the other ones that I got. So I popped up to pick up some mics off you, but we actually need to make them, don't we? Yeah. So we're going to probably pop downstairs and start off in the lathe in the metal room. In the metalworking room. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to make the uh, raw aluminium bodies mm -hmm. on the lathe. Yeah, sweet. Well, let's head downstairs. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the raw material for the... Mm -hmm. So this is the raw aluminium before yeah. chopping and putting in the lathe. Yeah, so I chop it into the 50 mil sections on this little saw. Mm -hmm. So this was the first step and now it's onto the lathe, is it? Yeah, so we're just gonna put these into the lathe and make them drill out the holes a little bit so that the capsule fits in and make them look tidy. But now it takes quite a fair bit of concentration on the lathe, but it's quite nice because you can zone in. It's quite a mindful activity because you're completely tuned into what you're doing visually. And also sonically because you can hear what the machine's doing. So that's one ready to get sandblasted, which basically smooths the surface and then painted. So that's like the three stages there, look. I haven't got one that's been sandblasted. Oh, nice. After we were done in the metal working room, we headed back upstairs to put all the pieces together. We've skipped out the spraying and gluing process as it takes a while for it to set and I was only here for one day. Here you can see Ezra soldering up the connections and wires for the mics. 
It's been a while since I'd done any soldering myself, but I thought I'd have a go. Put a tiny bit of solder on, see where it says pin one. Yeah, that's it. So you can kind of use that as a lever, look. So you can kind of heat mm. it up and then just go noink. Perfect. Yeah, nice. Ezra finished off the soldering on these mics and placed them to one side, ready for later testing. He had a pair of pre-built mini verdes that I was able to take, so we headed out to a local woodland where Ezra has been placing his drop rig to see what recordings we could capture. So well, I'll go double hoop. And you'll go. I'm going to go single, single hoop brown fluff. Single hoop brown fluff, and I'll go double hoop <laughs> black fluff. <laughs> Quite a simple setup that I've got. So I've just got the mini verdi bikes. And then my little Sony recorder. Does that come as one piece then, this thing? Have you, is that? Oh, uh, no, this was a small rig oh, right. cheese plate thing. And then these, you can get these arms separately. Oh, right. Um, it was, I did a video before when I was in Australia talking about this because I saw it from Colin Hunter Sound yeah. on Instagram. And he had his little setup. And I've seen some more people post on the Facebook groups and that yeah. with their own. That's cool. Little setups with these Joby arms and some other more flexible ones because this one's died a little bit now. Oh yeah, they do do that, don't they? Uh, I might end up going for the one hoops like you've got. It's interesting, isn't it? Because you don't have a huge amount of room to put the fluff on there. Mm. And you may get some fluff rattle on the yeah. side of the hoops. Yeah, it's quite a nice little thing, that. <laughs> it's blending in well with the environment. Yeah, it's got all the right Perfect colours. for a little drop rig. Yeah, that'd be cool. So what we've got to set up here is the Verdi mics going into Ezra's Sony A10. And then I've just got my M10 here as well. So you can hear the difference between the Verdi mics going into a recorder and just a recorder's kind of onboard microphones. So if I hit record as well, and then I'll do a little so we can get it synced up. We did a few more recordings in this spot, which included the stream running further up the hill and the trees swaying in the wind. Ezra also brought along his new Eco Probe attachment for the Magnetic Telus contact mic. We plan on meeting up again soon, so I'll cover that in a separate video. It was now time for us to pack up and head back. So it's a nice little test with this, wasn't it? Yeah, good little first, yeah. first outing. Not used them before, it's yeah. quite good. And you're going to do a drop rig test, aren't you, as well? Yeah, I'm going to come back tomorrow and set them up overnight so we can get the dawn chorus. I think the dawn chorus is going to be really nice this time of year in here. Yeah. yeah. So, and then Ezra's going to send me the files, aren't you? And I'll play them now on RX. <laughs> so hopefully those recordings of the stream and some other bits and bobs in the woods were quite interesting to have a gander at. And we're going to head back to the workshop Go have now. a cup of tea, yeah. shall we? <laughs> yeah, get warm. It's a bit chilly. Yeah, yeah, it's cold. <laughs> a big thanks again to Ezra for inviting me up to his workshop. I had a lot of fun nerding out over audio equipment and it was sick to see a behind the scenes look at the build process of the mics I use daily. 
This isn't a sponsored video, but I've left his website and socials in the description below. So if you want to support his work, check that out. Anyways, as always, cheers for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Big loves and peace out.